Dear Mrs. Peterson, dear Jim, dear Jens, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, as a four-star general and former Secretary of Defense, James Norman Mattis knows a thing or two about leadership. In his latest book, he sums it up as the three C's, competence, caring, conviction. And these values don't just describe his leadership style. These values describe Jim Mattis, the man himself. Dear Jim, I vividly remember our first conversation. It was uh, beginning of 2017. Jim Mattis had only been Secretary of Defense for a few days. President Trump had just called NATO obsolete. I was aghast and, as many of my colleagues, deeply concerned. Then Jim Mattis came, and he found calm words of wisdom amid a storm. Jim reassured us that NATO would remain the bedrock of American foreign policy. He made it very clear that for him, NATO was the glue that held together the security of the United States and Europe. And he made it clear that he cared deeply about the views of European allies. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis became the reassurance assuring presence for us in the Trump administration. With him at the helm of the Pentagon, we were confident that someone in the inner circle of the U.S. administration knew the value of the transatlantic alliance. And we knew we could count on him as a reliable friend. Indeed, Mrs. Peterson, you quoted Jim Mattis, who told the Senate Armed Services Committee at his confirmation hearing, history is clear. Nations with strong allies thrive and those without them wither." End of quote. Of course, we all know Jim Mattis and we knew the U.S. very well. During one of my visits to the United States as Defense Minister, Jim Mattis, it was the first visit, um, visiting you in the Pentagon, Jim Mattis, he took the time to tell me about the German Armed Forces' contributions to global security. That was a typical dramatist. He was listing all of our German missions on all continents. He also said that he was a newcomer and that he was ready to listen to his colleagues. Well, the effect, of course, was immediate. Everyone was ready, of course, to listen to you. Dear Jim, in the toughest of times, you kept our transatlantic partnership alive. You were a steadfast ally, ally on whom we could always count. And you 
were a guardian of the internationalist tradition in American foreign policy. At a time where this view was anything as popular in Washington, D.C. For this alone, your contributions to transatlantic relations are exceptional. Of course, we all know Jim Mattis, the military man. His 44-year career began in 1969, when he enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve, a career that brought him to the highest ranks of NATO as Supreme Allied Commander Transformation Secti, as well as head of the United States Central Command. But many of us also know Jim Mattis, the sophisticated scholar, the well-read man of letters, the analyst, or as his Marines like to call him, the warrior monk. But today, I'd also like to focus on Jim Mattis, the man of conviction. It is because of this conviction that Jim resigned as Secretary of Defense in December 2018. His firm belief in America's leadership role in the world and the importance of trust and respect of her allies. And it was, again, this conviction we saw at play in the summer of 2020. As a military man, Jim Mattis was focused on getting the job done, and he has always been a man of few words in public. But in June 2020, he forcefully broke his silence. As Trump threatened to deploy U.S. troops to confront peaceful demonstrators on American soil, General Mattis did not hold back. He spoke out unambiguously to condemn acts that he saw as divisive and contrary to American values. His powerful intervention resonated widely in America and beyond. His words reminded all of us that there was, that there is an even better America. An America that everyone in this room believes in. His brave words were an act of loyalty loyalty to the greater good and loyalty to the country he loves. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Mattis is a soldier whose competence is matched by very few. A scholar who cares deeply about the men and women in uniform, who cares deeply about his friends, and sometimes even cares about the enemy. And he is a man of the three C's, competence, caring, conviction. There are no better words to characterize this evening's laureate. Dear Jim, Thank you for your outstanding service to our transatlantic community. Thank you for your commitment to what the alliance between the United States and Europe can mean to the world. And thank you for your friendship and your support. I cannot think of a more worthy laureate. Congratulations on behalf of all of us of being awarded with the Henry A. Kissinger Prize.